Uh, Psalm, Psalm 19, verses 7, and let's read to 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping, and in keeping of them there is great reward. The word of God for the people of God. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord God, for this opportunity that you've given us once again to come before you, Lord God, and to sing praise into your great and holy name, to give to you out of what you have entrusted us with, Father. And now to hear your life-changing word, we ask you to prepare our hearts even now to be good ground for your word. We pray that you would cause every distraction in our hearts and minds to be pushed aside, that our focus and attention will be upon you, God. And we do ask you, Lord God, to enlighten the understanding of our hearts. Give us ears to hear what your spirit has to say to us. We pray for wisdom, courage, and strength to apply your word to our lives, that your name might be glorified by our living, and that we might see your great reward. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. You know, um, when I was thinking about it, this, I was thinking that the Word of God is complete. It, it gives us everything we need. You know, we don't need another word. You know, sometimes people have come up with, uh, yeah, well, that's, there's another word and another Bible and this and that. God has given us everything we need in this Word. Um, we started off, we read verse 7, he said, look, the law of the Lord is perfect, right? It's free, it's free from corruption, it is perfect, it is uh, perfectly fitted for what it's designed to do. That it is God's word to you and I, and we can't confess that, but it is really, we need to get that and understand that it is God speaking to us, right? I mean, it is his word for our lives, for our direction. It is perfectly fitted to bring us to the place where God wants, wants us to be, to shape our minds, our hearts, and our desires. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, let me just start off with that. Um, 16 and 17 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and that word inspiration means God breathed. It doesn't mean that somebody, I feel inspired to write, like people write songs or whatever. But this means that God breathed into man, right, to what, what he would write. He said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable. It, 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 there's, a, there's a reason why God gave the word. It is, there's an end goal in giving the word. It is, it is profitable for doctrine, and it teaches us, teaches us in the ways of God. Uh, without the word of God, we would have to go on what we feel and what we think. And, and you know, well, my opinion is this. The word of God should end all opinions. Right. You know, I had a lady once. She said, you're very opinionated. I said, I'm not opinionated at all. If you really don't know, I just believe what God's word says. And I think that that should shut down all opinions. Right. Because it is his word. OK. Now, uh, uh, and I can stand and, and be able to back and give enough evidence anybody wants to challenge whether or not this is the word of God I believe that if there, when all of the dust settles there's enough evidence to say that this is God's word that this is God's word and it is profitable that I mean, we gain from it we can gain you know teaching and and, and, and correction and straightening us out you know because everything about us is not you know, is not straight we need direction we need this word he instructs us in how to live righteous is what Paul told Timothy, so that we can be complete, right? So that we can be thoroughly, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Tells me that without God's word in my life, I'm not going to be able to do the good works that God wants me to do because I need to have his, I need to have his word as the direction of my heart and my mind to inform my decisions, right? Because you got, if, if, if the God's word doesn't inform your decisions, then something else will. Uh, if I ask you, how do you feel about this? What's your position on this? What do you believe about this? If it's not informed by God's word, then something else is informing it. And if it's not consistent with God's word, then it's not right. Because God is 
God, he's the author, right? It, it, what God's word does, it restores our soul and brings us back to him. And it brings us back to our duty, to who we were created to be. His word, it directs us and brings us back. And see, well, what, what I begin to understand is that words have power. For the, for, you know, for, in a very real sense, and I've told you this before, that in a very real sense, to a very strong degree, we live by words. We, we, we live words introduced, we, we have feelings, many times they're, they're, they're brought on by words. Think about the Garden of Eden. Here's Eve sitting there, and she, she cold chilling, right, loving up on the garden, and here comes the, the serpent, and he begins to introduce words to her. Has God said this? Yeah, you know what, let me tell you something, let me, let me, let me put you on some of my words. And then those words began to produce feelings in her. And she began to feel a certain way. And she began to move off of, you say, she, she moved on her feelings. Yeah, but they were brought on by, by words. Words have power, right? Our words have power. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. He says that we can speak life and we can speak death. That's why we need to be careful about what we say. Right? We need to be careful about what we hear. Right? Words have power. That's why God says faith comes by hearing. It comes through hearing words. We share words. We talk. When, I, when my faith in Christ, you know, began to be real, it's because somebody began to tell me and talk to me, give me words. Words have power. And so you got you, you to be careful what you listen to. You got to be careful what you allow your children to hear, right? I'm amazed because sometimes, and, and Satan is so slick, right? Because there are things that parents will never let somebody come into their house and sit and have a conversation with their children and tell them certain things, but they will let those children hear those things over music. Oh, somebody's going to be mad, right? But it's real. I'm telling you, are you with me? There are things that we would not let our children, you know, somebody come to, let me talk to your child, and I want to tell you about, you know, killing and, and, and this and that and, and, and raping and, and, and this and calling women names. You, you say, you, you got to get out of here with that. But if you put it to a beat and a music, not only will we let them listen to it, sometimes we play it while they're in, we introduce it to them. Oh, come on, you're with me, right? So we, we got to understand that words have power. That's why God said, Jesus said, we will be judged by what we say. He makes judgments on our words. And so we need to be careful of what we say and, stri and, and strive to speak things that are consistent with God, with his word, because the law of the Lord is perfect. And when you speak things that are consistent with him, you're talking, that's good words. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I say to you, Jesus said that for every idle word men speak as useless words, words that can't help, that are of no good, no benefit. He said for every idle word that men may speak, they will give account in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. We need to remember what James said, be slow to speak quick to hear, right? Now, if our words have power, just imagine the power of God's word, right? See, this is what, I, this is what I'm trying to bring you to here. Our words have power and ability to influence, right? But God's word has not only power to influence, but it has power to create. It has power to, sh to, 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 to determine and to shape his word is pure. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is the discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It works on every part of us, is what I'm saying. Is that when you expose yourself to the word of God, it, it, it begins to work on every part of you. Every part of you, and that is a great thing because you know um, there there is um, in in, um, in one of the uh, Christian disciplines there is a, a, a point that says that that it's called total depravity, and it doesn't mean that we are the worst that we could be at any point, but it means that all of our being has been cor corrupted by sin. 
Every part of me has been corrupted by sin. I have never, I've never been probably worse than I could possibly be. Could all, I could always have been done more and been worse. But every part, there's no part of my being that is unaffected by sin. And so God's word works on every part of me, which is a good thing. Right? Because every part of me needs to be worked on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you got to expose yourself to the word of God. That's why Satan fights us and doesn't want us to expose ourselves to the word of God because that word works on every part of us because it is living. It is powerful. Are you with me? Amen. The cure for any ill that we have in our character is a healthy dose of God's word. Right? You got some character flaws? God's word can address them and not only address them, not only say influence you, but that is the power to shape you and to remake you. Amen? Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, I don't think that we can realistically expect to overcome any shortcomings, any sins, without repetitive ear of consistently looking into God's word and what it has to say about them. I would always tell people, I said, you see, you say, man, I got this issue. You know, I'm struggling with such and such. You need to get into God's word and begin to focus on what God says about that such and such, that struggle. And you know, I, I would always liken it to like stain remover, right? You take your clothes and you put them in a washing machine. And so, so this is like, the, this, is, this is the washing machine. You come to church and, you know, and everybody's you know, in there and I'm just throwing the word out and agitating you, right? And, and getting you clean. But sometimes you got a stubborn stain. And before you put it in the washing machine, you got to spray it, right? You got to spray it with a little, uh, we used to use shout. I don't know what they use these days. I don't wash clothes and stuff like that. You know, I'm blessed, <laughs> right? So, but you got you to put the stain remover on it, right? It needs a little help. And so sometimes you have issues that need a little more than just the preacher talking to everybody at one time. You need a concentrated focus on your issue. And that's when you got to look into the word of God and say, you know what? If I'm struggling with this sin, don't shy away from what God's word says about it. Look and see what God, God's word said about it because it has the power yes. to break me free and to deliver me. Are you with me? Amen. Right. Amen. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It is firm. It is faithful. It is trustworthy is what David said. That the Bible is God speaking, as I said. It is his divine truth. And it is a sure direction in the way we should live. Shows us what our duty is. You, you show me a person who doesn't look into, the God, into God's word, I'll show you a person that doesn't really know how they're supposed to live. Because the word of God shows us our duty. It is a light in the lamp. For our path and our feet. Are you with me? The Bible establishes what right behavior is and what wrong behavior is. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's it. I mean, if I want to know what's right behavior about what, what's wrong, I look into the Bible. And then somebody says, well, wait, what about the things, you know, because I know like there's some things that just, you know, it don't cover, you know. I used to always use the example like, you know, maybe... Uh, Somebody used to shoot, maybe you shoot basketball. You say, well, what the Bible say about basketball? What the Bible say about shooting pool? The Bible say nothing about basketball shooting pool. But it does say this, that whatever you do, you need to have confidence that it's all right with God if you don't see it in his word. Are you with me? Romans chapter 14, verse 23. He who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith or whatever is not of faith is sin. The issue you read the whole chapter of Romans to catch the drama of this, of this last verse and what he's talking about is they were talking about you know people had meat that they you know which they show we could eat the meat and uh, some people say you can eat the meat and, and Paul's like ain't nothing unclean you know it's all good but look I mean if you think it's bad for you then you stay away from it right but in the same sense if if I know that something is all right and the scripture, you know, don't, don't speak against it and you think it's bad, I shouldn't try. I shouldn't try to encourage you to do it because I would be encouraging you to sin because you're sinning against your own conscience. Right. But also, you know, for those things that you're not sure about, it's better not to do things. But for the most part, you look into God's word for every every moral issue, every 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 sin. You look into God's word and it tells you what right behavior is. It tells you what wrong behavior is. And then it tells you what's right and wrong for you personally. Now, if you can't do it from faith, knowing that you got the confidence that it's all right in the eyes of God, then you shouldn't be doing it. In that sense, it covers everything in life. It covers everything in life. The word of God gives us insight. It makes us wise. One of the things I begin to uh, learn early on 
you know, uh, 20 something years ago or so, I began, you know, as, as I began to walk with God and, and, and read his word, I began to realize that I was becoming wise. And I was young, but the word of God was, was, was making me wise and my confidence was building up. I felt like, man, I could talk to anybody about life because I was getting words from the author of life. But that's what the Bible does. Proverbs 2, 6 says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And the word of God makes you wise. It gives you skill for living. You begin to apply God's word to your life and live consistently by his word. You'll find people asking you for advice about life decisions because they recognize something about you. Because God's word gives you wisdom. It gives you understanding. Verse 8 said that the Lord, the precepts of, of the Lord are right. Is what the psalmist said, that they are right. That his commandments are right. They agree with the eternal rules of life. That following the Bible is to walk the good path. Following God's word is to walk the good path. If we want to be able to say like the apostle Paul said, you know, I have finished my course. You got to follow God's word. That is how you finish your course, because the word of God, once again, is the light and the lamp. That word, Lord, is a light and a lamp. He says it rejoices the heart. So that's what, that's what David just said. He says that the statutes of the Lord are right, verse 8, rejoicing the heart. Rejoicing the heart. It brightens up the heart. Don't you feel better that you've got God's word in your life? I mean, don't, don't, don't you feel like you, you, you got joy now, you got peace, and you don't have to go out and get do external things to try to be happy and satisfied? I've told you in the past that I would go out into the world to find satisfaction, now I go out into the world satisfied. Because the word of God has brightened my heart. It brings the light and it reminds us of God's faithfulness. You know, when you, when you got challenges and you're going through difficulties or you, or you got you know, wants and needs or, or, or troubles or persecutions or whatever it is, that word of God reminds you of God's faithfulness. And instead of being cast down, it brightens up your heart, right? It brightens your heart because God's precepts are right. Following them brings happiness to the heart. People who follow God's word are happy in their heart. They have happy hearts. They are satisfied. They find themselves saying, man, I love, the, I love this Christian life. Because they are following God's word. And it brings satisfaction to the heart. And a happy heart is good for the body. You know, modern medicine, you know, uh, you know, you know maybe a couple of decades ago or so, whatever, starts to realize the effects of stress. And how good stress can have on the body. And stress narrows the organs and this and that. I mean, the arteries and uh, things like that. The Bible said that a long time ago, that a happy heart is good for the body, right? Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a, like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Not only do you, you know, you're feeling good on the inside and the out. Because you're following God's word. And when you follow his word, it brings you the true happiness of heart. Doesn't mean that you won't ever have challenges or difficulties, right? The disciples followed Jesus on the water and they went straight into a storm, right? But that, that storm didn't have the power to, you know, to take away that happiness and the joy in their heart. As a matter of fact, it was an opportunity for them to see the greatness of God. One of those storms they were in, they said, what manner of man is this? They got a revelation. Another stone they were in, Peter got to walk on, on the water. Yes. When we follow his word, we do well. And when we don't, we do evil. Amen. Simple as that. Amen. Right? I follow God's word, I'm doing well. When I don't follow his word, I do wrong. That's as simple as, as it can be said there, right? If everyone kept God's word, you know, sometimes I hear people talk about, oh, you know, man, if we just were better, this is that. You know, what, you, know, you know what the issue is? We don't keep God's word. If everyone kept God's word, this would be a moral world. This would be a beautiful moral world if everybody kept the word of God. Think about it. Nobody would cheat on, no, no, no spouses would cheat, right? There'd be no fornication, you know, there'd be no, no thefts. No, no, none of that because we would be following God's word. 
That's the, that, that is the cure for all the ill, to follow God's word. But in order to follow God's word, Jesus said a man's got to be, you got to be born again. You got to surrender your life to Christ. You got to believe on Jesus so that he can transform you and make this word good to you. Right. But David said, David understood that, that at, 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 at the root of it all is people not following God's word. Psalm 119, verse 128, David said, therefore, all your precepts concerning all things are considered to be right. He said, and, and by contrast, I hate every false way. Because, you know, Jesus says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Right? You think about it. Didn't seem too bad what Adam and Eve did, right? Yeah, just, you know, ate off a tree, guys, they don't eat off of. But you never know what sin is connected. And there's a whole lot of sin connected to that in one act. That's why you and I want to follow God's word, because we don't know what sins, what consequence, what could be connected to not following God's word. Are you with me? The commandments of the Lord are pure, he said. It's pure. It cleans and it cleans those that embrace it. You embrace God's word, it cleans you. Remember David asked, uh, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. It cleans us. If we have something in our lives that's not right, it's probably not because we're not living consistent with God's word. All right? Something in our lives that's, that's, that's out of whack, if it's out of whack in life, is out of whack with the word. Because the word of God is a guide for us. Now, the beautiful thing about it is that Jesus told the disciples, he said, I will give you a comforter. I'm going to give you the, I'm gonna, the Holy Spirit is going to come. Right? And one of the things that, that just, you know, I'm like, the devil will try to pervert anything, right? Like, we're going to have the Holy Spirit, but we don't need no Bible. We're just going to have God, you know, we're going to just, you know, be hype jumping. We're going to love it. Everything's going to be great. We're just going to love it. It's going to be, oh, the Spirit. The main job of the Spirit is to illuminate the Word. So that you can live according to the principles of God. So that you can have the, so you can please him with your life. That you can know the will of God, right? Jesus says in John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will, he's going to teach you all this. And he's going to bring to remembrance these words, right? It's going to empower you, Right? Oh, you're going to feel out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water, just like Jesus said. But it's not going to be absent from the word. It's going to be in conjunction with the word. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Any church that, 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 that would want to, you know, uh, major on, you know, spirit and not without word is crazy. You know, it's, it's the spirit and the word because the spirit illuminates the word and empowers us. To live the word. Are you with me? Amen. And so Paul said, be filled with the spirit. Let it guide you. Let it lead you. Let it influence you. And he's going to influence you to live the word. Because living the word is going to walk you into pleasing God. And when a man's ways please the Lord, he's all right. He makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Amen. Amen. Last thing I want to tell you, uh, um, well, just about last, almost. The fear of the Lord, he says in, ver in uh, verse 9, is clean. That fear of reverence, that reverence for God. All right. I was talking to a guy once, and I told you, I, I know I told you this before. I was talking to a guy once, and we were talking about the Lord and stuff, and he did like people like to do. And I understand that, because I, I did it myself, you know. Um, we we want to try to make ourselves right with God and you know like man I'm, I'm on God's side you know I'm all right with God um, because who likes feeling that you're not and he says hey man I tell you one thing about me man I fear God I fear God but he was blatantly doing all kind of stuff that he knew was wrong and the Bible says by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil you know what I'm saying that's what the scripture said it's not me Right? So if I say I fear God, what that fear of God is going to do, it is going to cause me to begin to fight myself out of sin because I can't stay in this and fear him 
And I used to say, what, I've, you, you've heard me use a, the example of, of the very real example of the state trooper on the side of the road. And you're going down the highway and you're doing 20 miles over the speed limit and you see the state trooper and you're just going to keep on doing 20 because you ain't worried about that, right? No, everybody is going to pump their brakes, right? Everybody pumps their brakes out of respect. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So how do I not pump my brakes? in my life, knowing that God sees me, knowing that God looks at me. The next time I begin to speak and think about saying something that I knew I, sh I shouldn't say, I, I better remember that he's watching and that he makes judgments on my words and I need to pump my brakes. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, right? By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And so he says, the fear of the Lord, it is clean, right? It, 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 he said, this reverence here, this true godliness, godliness as prescribed in the word of God, it, it reigns in the wildness in our hearts, because all of us have wildness in our hearts. Sin has messed us up so, I mean, holiness is the most offensive thing to us. You know, I mean, you know, I, think about it. What, uh, I, I can remember um, when I was uh, a little younger, probably was um, just out of my teens, and they, you know, that charismatic movement was coming up in the churches and stuff like that and people were starting to focus on you know just kind of you know really being you know godly and holy and this and that and I can remember man I used to hear people make so much fun about uh, holiness it wasn't funny you know it was like it was the worst thing in the world right holy roller you know what I mean and then somebody was trying to live right and say oh you holier than Holier than thou, and just trying to make, you know, just trying to get people off of holiness. Because holiness is the most offensive thing to a sinful person. And so what people try to do is try to get God to be not so holy, right? To be not so holy. Because we got wildness in our, in our hearts because of sin. And what happens is that when we begin to reverence God and respect him, it begins to push us out of evil and it begins to tame the wildness in our hearts and then we can appreciate holiness right we can appreciate goodness and righteousness are you with me so I ask you today guys this word of God we're following it and reverence in God will result in a cleaner life because it cleans us and brings in all of the wildness in our hearts it transforms us I know that you get a few people in a room and there are things that we need. Anything in your life need cleaning. Cleaning up. Maybe in your thought life. Maybe your mindset. How about your speech? Right? Do you, I, want you to, I want you to just think, if you could just do this for you know, maybe the next couple of days, uh, at least a day, as you begin to talk, I want you to imagine God standing right next to you. Imagine the Lord Jesus standing right next to you and think about what you say, what you're going to say. Right? Because that's really the way it is. Because he is right there. And he is making judgments. And I need to think about it. I need to be mindful of that. Right? Because we'll say things um, are, are, you know, in certain arenas that we won't say in other arenas. But we need to remember that we're always in the arena of, of God. Right? I'll say things to my, in front of my wife that I might not want somebody else to hear. And I mean, they're all private things, but I'm not talking about just private things. I'm talking about things that, you know what, you don't need to say that. Am I the only one that sometimes you get ready to say something, you feel, something, something, you feel a voice inside saying, man, don't say that. Don't even mention that. Right? And sometimes I thought that I ain't say nothing. Two days. <laughs> then that third day, she couldn't resist. Guess what? We gotta fight that. Those are things to pray about, right? Those are things to pray about because God is making judgments. Jesus says every idle word that people speak, they're gonna be judged for it. Are you with me? Maybe we need. Maybe somebody needs to clean in their attitude, right? That nobody needs to tell you. You know your attitude is not Christ-like. You need cleaning that. Maybe I just need God to you know, do like David, say, Lord, search me, try me, know me. Give me right, Lord. You, you go on to read the rest of um, 
Psalm 19, and David talked about keeping me back from all these old presumptuous sins and stuff. Lord, help me. Strengthen me. The judgments of the Lord are true. That's what he said. That all of the determinations of God are right. They are consistent with justice, and there's no unrighteousness in God. In God, Nobody has ever received unrighteousness at the hand of God. But you know, I'm thankful because I don't want God, I don't want justice from God. I want grace and mercy. I don't want justice, I want grace and mercy. Because Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. I don't want justice because I've sinned. And it's death, he's not talking about dying out of his word, he's talking about an eternal separation from God. He's talking about that death that that, that separation from God that Jesus, uh, you know, tasted for us. The Bible says, and I don't have the scripture here in Hebrews 2, 9, that he tasted death for every man. It's talking about that separation. When he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's the wages of sin. That would be justice for us. But I want that justice. I want the grace. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. He says of this word, because this word tells us of the Savior. You know, we get a general revelation of God in nature. We can see his might and his power. The heavens declare the glory of God. But it's his word that shows us his character and his love and his faithfulness that he would send us a Savior, right? And so what David said here is he echoes what Job says. David said these words are more to be desired than gold and they're sweeter than honey on the honeycomb. And Job understood the beauty of having word from God and the power of those words. He said, I esteem them more than my necessary food. You got to value God's word. Fight your way into God's word. Get this word in your heart. Build it into your heart so that when troubles come and trials and, and difficulties, you will have the word of God strengthening you and empowering you and reminding you that he is faithful. And that he has the last say so. Yes. And that there will be a day that he will right every wrong. And that his children will weep no more. Amen? Yes. Amen. We stop right here. He says there's a great